Hi everyone and welcome back to The Colour Cave where we like to play with art stuff. My name is Gem and today it's time for our Scroller Box unboxing. I'm pleased to report that the weather outside is now matching up with the time of year which I'm super happy about. So we're going to get cracked into the monthly subscription box uh, that is based in the UK and for those of you that are new to this sort of thing you pay a set amount every month or you can pay it yearly if that's what you like and uh, they send you a surprise box of goodies every month. There is a kind of set format to the boxes so inside the box you will get a set of supplies usually something to draw or paint on you get a little magazine that tells you more about supplies and has some other arty information in it there's a featured artist and we usually get a sticker and a suite in the scroller box as well so it's usually very good value for money and in my experience with scroller boxes supplies are usually really high quality so here is our scroller zine so this is the magazine i was talking about and that is a very beautiful Oh, I don't even know what this is. It looks very, ooh, might be some sort of paint. Anyway, we'll put that to the side and look at that afterwards because we don't want to spoil the surprise. And we have our featured artist here. This might be pencil actually. This is beautiful. I love these quite realistic types of artwork and especially when they're as detailed as this. There's even like, there's lots of little veins and all the petals and everything. That is super detailed. I love a bit of detail. So the featured artist is Safana. And it tells you on the back here a little bit, little bit about the artist as well as any links to social media, etc. that they have so that you can check out more of their artwork. And that is beautiful. It's so delicate. Okay, we have a surface and uh, yeah, this leads me to think it might be pencils. This is a cartridge pad, a gold line cartridge pad in A5. It's produced exclusively for scroller box. Now it's Clairefontaine that makes the gold line papers and Clairefontaine papers are really, really high quality. So I'm confident that this will be, uh, this will be a high quality item. We've got 16 sheets and it is 120 GSM. It's quite textured, Ooh, love a bit of texture. I'm a huge fan of textured paper. And once again, I love the fact that there's 16 sheets because if you decide you do like this paper, you've got plenty to use up before you have to start going digging about the internet to find some more. And here is our sticker, which normally matches the artwork. And I do the, play the game of trying to trying to match it up. I think it's that way. Yeah, it fits in there. It's like a little jigsaw. <laughs> and we've got our sweet as well. What is this? A, a black currant and licorice. Oh my goodness, I do like a bit of black currant and licorice. Not usually a huge sweet fan, more of a savoury person, but that's definitely for me this time and not Mr. Gem. Okay, so we have got a Derwent line maker. So this is a fine liner. I've had one of these before. I have tried these pens. I, I quite like them. They're nice. So this is a, a 0 0.5 in black. Let's look at the nib. As far as fine liners go, that's a fairly chunky fine liner. Uh, these are pretty high quality though. And I'm pretty sure these are waterproof once they're dry. Uh, free flowing pigment liners. Uh, super fine, ideal for drawing and writing. Okay, it doesn't tell you, but we'll get more information on that in due course. We have a paintbrush. Oh, it's not labelled at all. It's quite small. Okay, the gum that they put on the tip to keep it together is really, really sticky. I think I'm going to have to wash this. This does not look like a high quality paintbrush at all. Um, just the way the bristles are sitting. I'm going to zoom in a little bit. Uh, there, there's uh, there's no sort of point on this. It's quite rough at the ends. Oh, okay. Mm -hmm. Right, we shall see. Dubious, dubious. Uh, the fact that there's no information on the paintbrush itself, I find slightly disconcerting also. Pearl Burnish Liquid White Coloured Pencil. Okay, so this is a weeny little bottle. One fluid ounce, it's only three mil. <laughs> but it, I think it's a little dropper bottle. Oh, look at that. Oh, it's really gummy. It's really thick. It does say on it to shake well. So we'll, we'll give that a shake before we test it. <laughs> That's really interesting. I have never seen this before. And we, ha we have our list of supplies, which we'll check out. That'll give us a bit more information. And we have a set of Posca pencils in six colours. Exclusive colour selection for scroller box. So the pencil colours that are in here, you can't buy it as a set. I think that's what they mean by that. Uh, now, I have seen the Posca pencils. They seem wildly, wildly expensive. I haven't had the pleasure of trying them, so this is going to be all good. Okay. Oh, they feel nice. I, most of you will know I am a bit of a, a pencil monster, so this kind of suits me. Yeah, there, there's it's quite a quite a chunky barrel that's on them. They've got a dipped end finish, which I'm yeah, I can take or leave. Uh, there are no color names on these pencils. There is no color codes as far as I can see. Just an annoying sticker that gets stuck in your sharpener. Let's see. We've got a really pale sort of washed out. It's not even salmon pink. I wouldn't say. 
a lilac color, a sort of raspberry color maybe, a grey, a very nice turquoise color and a more sort of traditional blue color. So straight off the bat, I say I know these pencils are expensive, I know they're expensive. The fact that there's no colour codes or colour names on them, it's on the label, that is absolutely no use to you because once you sharpen down past that point, you've no idea what was going on. If they were going to do that, the barcodes should have been down here at the dipped end. So that's brutally, brutally disappointing. So according to this, we've got blue, green, blue, grey, fuchsia, that doesn't look like fuchsia to me, but okay, lilac and light orange, again, doesn't look like fuchsia to me. So I, uh, I'm a bit disappointed from the, from the offset. I will be interested to try them out though, so we'll get to that in just a wee second. Let's take a look at the list of supplies and see if we can learn some more information. Okay, uh, it says at the top here they're celebrating flourishing flora using coloured pencils. So they want you to, I'm assuming that the scroller challenge, which is the art prompt, will be something to do with flowers. Okay, so the Uni Posca coloured pencils. Posca is a brand we're all familiar with. Uh, the coloured pencils have now been added to their collection. They're made from a unique combination of wax and oil. Normally, if they've got wax and oil in them, they would be referred to as oil-based pencils. Uh, as opposed to exclusively wax. I tend to favour oil-based pencils, so this will be good as well. So the wax and oil creates a strong but soft lead that can be used to produce a highly concentrated, smooth, bright colour with a matte finish. Richly pigmented colour palette. They can be used on different surfaces such as paper, card, wood, metal, leather, glass, plastic, canvas and organic materials. Okay. So that's an interesting feature. Recommended retail price. Now we know that the retail, the recommended retail price is usually highly, highly inflated and you tend to find them cheaper online, but they are saying £2.50 each. So these pencils are up in the same bracket as the likes of your Polychromos and some of the Derwent ranges of pencils as well. And if you're in the UK, Prismacolors as well, they're all in that sort of two to three pound per pencil bracket. So they are these are, you know, up there with the big boys, which is interesting. So that's a pretty high standard that they're going to have to meet to justify it. The Pearl Burnish Liquid White. Okay, so this stuff is actually made by the featured artist. That's a made that is so cool. Excellent. I love that that they're supporting the artists as well. That's amazing. Good job, scroller box. Round of applause for you. It's perfect for adding highlighting and layering effects to your work and unlike paint colored pencils cannot always easily be layered over and over with lighter colours often not holding enough pigment when used as a top layer. With this liquid pencil you can intensify or create white areas without having to sacrifice any pigmentation. And what's more, this white pencil is, once this white pencil is dry you can even layer more colour pencil on top. Straight away in my mind I am thinking to myself, quite some time ago I did a video on covering up colouring book line work to fade it out so that the black outlines weren't so obvious and I used some Winsor & Newton white drawing ink for that. I would be really interested to try this in a colouring book to fade out the line work, especially if it's made for pencil to go over the top of it. Colourists, if you're watching, let me know if you'd like to see a video on that. I will leave a link to that original video down in the description at the end card for you as well if you want to check that out. So I, I am excited about this. It's a unique product. It's something that's completely new to me and I would love to think and hope that that would work because that would solve a lot of problems when it comes to coloured pencil. Moving on, the Derwent Line Maker. It's a free-flowing liner, produces precision. Great tool. It contains permanent fast drying pigment ink, making it perfect for any mixed media project. So yeah, leave it to dry, which they say is quite quick. And then if you're using water-based media over the top of it, it should stay where it is. I don't know whether this is pronounced Zan or Zane. It's Z-A-H-N. It's a size two round brush. It's a pony hair brush. Okay, so instantly a pony hair brush is a, a budget brush or a, a sort of school grade brush. So this is not an artist quality brush in my book. Uh, the, the bristles tend to be very coarse, they don't hold a good point and that's what I was saying to you, uh, that this is, this is a cheap brush. With a fine tip that will produce controlled detailing in your work. Now again, if I, was, if I was going for detail, I would want a very, very specific point to my brush and a pony brush is not something that I would use. So again, we'll test that out and see how it goes. It is very cheap, the recommended retail price £1.29, so you know, you get what you pay for. The paper. 
a fantastic smooth surface texture. No, it's not smooth. It's not smooth. Marker paper is smooth. This paper has texture. Paper is acid free and perfect pairing for colored pencils, charcoal and other sketching media. When you're using sketching media, you don't want smooth paper. You want something with some sort of texture to it because that's what the graphite or the colored pencil grips and that's how you actually get the color off on the paper. So they've completely contradicted themselves there. Uh, 16 sheets of paper will have plenty for all your test uh, testing sketches and final products. The Scroller Challenge is Secret Garden. That's a lovely prompt. I like that a lot. That's amazing. That, that This is the kind of prompt that I really like because it can be interpreted in so many ways, but it sends you in a direction. What that means is you're not left thinking, oh my goodness, what am I going to do with this prompt? We'll get to that in just a little while. We will be doing the scroller challenge in this video. But before we do that, obviously we want to test out our supplies and I am really keen to do this. So we'll start We'll start with the basics here. Let's start with the, oh, the fine liner. As I say, I've had one of these before and a 0 0.5 is quite a thick line width for a fine liner. It's not jumbo, but um, there is a, a, you know, you're going to struggle to get dainty lines. But because of the shape of the nib, if you tilt this very slightly, you will be able to vary the line width a little bit. How uniform that will be will depend on your skill level and how steady your hand is. But this ink is not bad at all. So even though there's a little bit of texture on this paper, I'm making really quick strokes and it's going down, you know, it's not struggling to keep up with me. And I can see that drying as I'm using it. Now, given it's uh, in Scot <laughs> here in Scotland, it's got very warm all of a sudden, which we're not complaining about, but it's quite warm in the cave. So obviously that's going to facilitate a quicker drying time than if we were like a fortnight ago where it felt like the middle of winter. The colour seems to be quite rich when you put it down, but as it dries, it seems to fade a little bit. So I wouldn't say it's a deep, dark, true black, but for the purposes of what we're doing, it's absolutely fine, it's perfect. And if you don't want that really stark, standout black, this is a bit more of a, a subtle choice for you, especially with certain styles of illustration. You know, if you're going for a slightly more realistic feel, if you have a true dark black, it looks a bit kind of artificial. So this is actually really nice in the, you know, for that, if you're into that style of artwork. If you're going for more of an animation or comic type feel, this might look a bit kind of washed out because you really want, you know, those nice sort of bold lines. Okay, come on pencils, let's have you. So I'll start with the lightest colour here. And oh, that is creamy smooth. Oh my. And they're layering up beautifully. Oh, these pencils are quite nice. I'm quite curious as to how close the dipped ends are to the colour of the actual pencil. It's something that seems to be a point where a lot of brands fall down, even though the pencils are good quality. And it's really annoying if you've got a big set and you're looking for something to fit in to what you're doing and you you, you accidentally pick up the wrong one because the, the ends don't match the actual colour of the core. But these, they are rich. There is no doubt about it. They are lovely and smooth. Feel, they feel nice to use and they seem to be working well on this paper. I can get a good couple of layers down as well. The cores are quite soft. So I'm just wondering how much sharpening we'd be doing with these because that is the downfall of a softer pencil. Because they wear down quicker, you sharpen them more, which means you actually use the pencil up more quickly. So it can be a bit of a... Um, a bit of a problem and a bit of a false economy because you end up replacing your pencils much more often than if you had a harder core. The colour selection's interesting, especially if we're going for like floral stuff. Um, but I'm, I'm glad they've given us a range of colours, though this colour's lovely. I kind of thought, they said secret garden, I kind of thought they might have given us a green, like a, a true green, but no, apparently not. Even the grey's nice. Okay, I want to do a bit of layering with different colours and we'll try a wee bit of blending as well. So the obvious choice here is to go for this turquoisey colour. Now you could, because these are as soft as they are in terms of lay down, you could just mash down one layer of colour like, and press really heavily and you'll get quite an even pigment coverage. So there is that option if you're not a leery type person like me, you know, you're more into blending. Eh, that's not, nah, it's not great, it's not bad. Yeah, I'm getting kind of a muddy middle here. Okay, so they're not great for blending. They're okay, actually. They're not. They're not terrible, but they're not. I have better pencils for this. Okay, so let, let's try a bit of layering up as well. I'm trying to keep a light hand when I'm doing this. You're, when you're working in layers, it's always better to work in, in light layers. But the, the pencil seems very eager to get onto the paper, so you do you really do have to use a light hand. So if you're of the heavy-handed variety, uh, I wouldn't recommend layering these pencils. Okay, yeah, that okay, that's, that's given us a, a reasonably nice uh, sort of darker purple colour. 
Just wanted to keep going and see how many layers we can get in here before things start to get a bit, you know, a bit messy. That's that's taking a lot though. Okay, there we go. Okay, so we can layer them up to, to make different colours. That's nice as well. And I've not had any issues with that at all. So these pencils are quite nice. I feel at this early stage though, they're still not worth the money that they're, they're purportedly going for because of this silly idea here. I have other pencils that do the same job that are around the same price, so I wouldn't be swayed to change brands at this point, but time will tell and we need to do an artwork to really figure that out. I'm gonna give this a really, really good shake. <sighs> now we've got some quite like heavy layers of pencil here, so this would be an ideal opportunity to test this out. I'm not even sure I want to use the dropper because the dropper's quite big. Um, if you were looking for precision, I think you'd have to dip your dip your paintbrush in, in the little vial. But I mean, a little of this will go a long way, clearly. So here's my pony brush. And oh, no, just no, like straight away, no. You can't get any sort of precision with this because the bristles are all split, splayed out. So it's an absolute no for the paintbrush. And I wish they would just not have given us one. So let's see if we can cover this up. That is quite a rich layer of pencil. I feel as if there's more wax in these pencils than oil. Like just by the way that they feel. So let's try that. Try it on one of the lighter colours as well. In fact, let's just try it on all of them. Why not? Try and put it. The dropper's actually working a lot better than I thought it would. So I take back my previous statement like from just a minute ago. I wonder how long this stuff takes to dry. I'm assuming it's water based as well. Do we clean our brush in water? Okay, it doesn't say anything about drying times and it doesn't say anything about whether it's water based or not. But I've just dipped my paintbrush in a pot of water that I happen to have sitting beside me. And it has taken away all of the all of the liquid pencil all off of the, the, the paintbrush. So that's good. Paintbrush is garbage though. It's absolutely garbage. To, to put this grade of paintbrush in a, a supposedly, you know, a supposed artist box, it's a bit insulting to be honest. There, there are better synthetic brushes than this that'll do the same job. And I happen to stock some of those in the stash shop. So most of you know about the brush that I would use for this. And I may actually switch over for the sake of the scroller challenge. There's just, there's nothing nice about this brush. Even the length of the bristles and the way they've been cut in, they're not in, look, I've got a tiny little short bit down the side. I don't know if you'll be able to see that against the paper there, maybe if I zoom in. But I've got really short bristles. Okay, so I've left this for a little while and it is dry now. And I have to say this covers up beautifully. I think that maybe, okay, this is not dry at all. It's it's not dry at all. Oh boy. I'm gonna leave this and see how long it takes to, to dry. I feel like this one here was maybe too thin a coat because the pencil underneath is poking through, but that's okay. I'm gonna put a blob on the top of the fine liner as well, again, just as a little bit of an experiment. We'll just pop that down there and I'll spread it out with our high quality pony brush. I say it's very warm in the cave today, so really, you know, I can't, I can't do much more to help it out. But we'll pop that down there and we'll just see how long it actually takes. So I'm gonna start a timer for this one. I'll, I'll come back and poke at it periodically <laughs> until we see how long it takes to dry. Okay, so that's us, we've got timer going. Maybe if I blow on it, that'll help. Okay, so I checked this after half an hour and it still wasn't dry and we're now at 46 minutes and I can still leave a fingerprint in it. So I don't know how long this stuff's gonna take to dry. It is pretty opaque. So in terms of using it for highlights and things, I think it's gonna be fairly good. Uh, these ones, again, I can still rub it off with my finger. So I wouldn't want to be trying to put pencil down on top of it. So I think I'm just gonna leave this and I'll update you on this situation uh, when we've done our artwork. So the other quick test that I want to do is I want to take this fine liner and I want to see how well it goes down over the top of a heavy layer of pencil. And that seems to be going down okay. It's whether or not it dries or not. Just because it's sitting on a wax and oil base, you know, it tends to be quite slidey. And I'm just curious as to whether or not that's gonna stay put or whether if we're gonna use it for lining and things that you would want to put your black pencil down first. So I'm gonna give that a little minute as well. And then after that, I think we're pretty much uh, all tested out. The other thing I'm noticing about this as well, I was just trying this out on a, on a thinner layer of pencil. And if I put this down, if I try and thin it out, it's actually picking up the color of the pencil and uh, yeah, depositing it further down. It's very, very slight, but it is there. So um, I'm a little bit disappointed about this. 
I was kind of hoping that this would be some sort of miracle product. Maybe in thinner layers it would dry. This part over here that I'd actually rubbed some of it off is about as close to dry as it's going to get. It's not moving about. So I'm going to try and put some pencil on top of that. But as you can see, you can still clearly see the pigment through that. But I've gone to put pencil down on top of it and it's actually just lifting off the liquid pencil, so it's not doing anything at all. Uh, I'm, I'm really, really disappointed in that. The other thing that I think would have been really good in this, um, it does say to shake well. It would be really helpful if there was a little ball bearing in there to help mix it, you know, like you get with Posca pens and that kind of thing. Um, I think that would be a really, a really helpful addition to making sure you've got this at the right consistency because I'm not sure what is the right consistency. It does seem quite thick and I would imagine it would need to be thick in order to cover up the pencil but that, that's just a thought more than anything. I think in terms of doing the artwork just now though I'll maybe use this for highlights but I'm not too keen on using it to layer pencil up. So thinking about the, uh, the scroller challenge itself, Secret Garden, it is a lovely prompt. It's going to be a bit of a struggle with the colour selection that we've got here and I'm not entirely sure that even with the widest of perceptions of this post that these pencils actually fit in with the prompt. The minute anyone thinks of garden I would assume that they would see some sort of greenery. They haven't even given us colours so that we can layer up the pencils to make a green. Obviously we would need a yellow for that which we don't have. So you're actually very limited and I think they have been real eroded in their perception of what they're doing with the prompt and kind of forcing people into something like this. So that's a bit unfortunate. We can still do something with this. Uh, I'd, I'd say I just wish we had even one green pencil would have been great or a yellow in place of one of the blues perhaps would have been lovely. So we're just going to see what we can do with this. I do have a little bit of an idea. Again, just with the supplies we've got, I'm going to sketch this in pencil. I'm usually quite strict on not using outside any, any supplies outside of what comes in the box, but I'm not even sure if these pencils will erase. I should really have tested that out as well. I'm going to grab an eraser. Okay, so I've got a couple of different types of eraser here. I've got a plastic one. I've got a, a rubber one. I've got a kneaded eraser and I've also got an electric eraser as well. Not to be confused with an electric razor. <laughs> so we're going to test this with the lightest pencil we've got. Get down a couple of layers and we'll test it with one of our darker values as well. Okay, so I'll start with the electric eraser. Uh, if I always find that's a good place to start. And that's taken away a fair amount of the lightest colour. I'm quite impressed with that. It's done not a bad job there. So you can lift a reasonable amount of colour with that. The uh, A more traditional eraser, is n it's taken away the lighter stuff, but once we get into the heavier layers again, it's kind of struggling. To be honest, this is what I would expect. I've got the plastic one. Oh, the plastic one's not doing much at all. Okay. Oh, that's just kind of smooshing the colour about. <laughs> <laughs> okay, again, it is still taking a little bit away, but it's not taking much. And I'll try with a kneaded eraser, so we'll dab. Uh, e no, give it a rub. Okay, so it's kind of same performance with all the erasers. And that's doing not very much. Uh, the colour is actually coming off on the on the putty, but it's not, not making a significant difference on the paper. Okay, well, that was worth a try. Because my thinking was that and rather than having to use a sketching pencil, I could use the grey pencil as my sketching pencil. So if I try and pop in, let's just do a little bit of, pretend I've sketched something really artistic there, you know. Let's go with this electric eraser and see if this is going to uh, lighten it up, but it's not going to take it away. So I'd be quite reluctant to do that. I think I'll just stick with a, a graphite pencil to do the sketch. Okay, so my thinking with this is, I think of a secret garden, I actually think of the illustration in front or on the front of the novel, The Secret Garden, and the addition that I had as a child was uh, like a walled garden and you, there was the gateway into the garden and the gate was kind of like hanging askew as if someone had maybe sneaked in. But I suppose that's a bit, um, that's cheating a little bit, isn't it? Because that's someone else's idea. But my thought was, what if we had some sort of stone chest or box you know like um a cross between a planter and a treasure chest and maybe maybe this box has got some sort of lid on it i don't know you know flowers and things peeking out of it that might be quite nice so that what that would let us do is we could utilize our gray for our stone box and we could maybe use some of the blue to layer it up to get some nice shadows and things and we really get some nice texture on it 
And then in the middle here, we can use these other colors and we can have lots of flowers poking out of it. So that would be like, obviously if the chest was closed over, no one would know that it was a garden of any description. And uh, when you open it up, obviously it would be all beautiful. Again, a green sieving just to put some moss on this or something would be lovely. I'm not gonna keep banging on about that. I've been laboring that point and you don't want to hear me moaning. Okay. So that's the idea that I'm going to go for. I ended up having to abandon this the other day. Um, I'll explain why in another video. That's not important right now. But anyway, we're back. I was having a chat with my friend on the phone the other night and I was telling her about this set of coloured pencils and she came up with a genius idea and I'm going to utilise that to do this drawing. So I'm going to change it a little bit. I'm still sticking with this idea of the, the chest with the garden in it, but I really, really wanted to include my gate as well. So what I've decided to do is make this uh, a, ve a, ve a very secret garden. Um, that I want to put the little gate on, but what I'm going to do is I'm going to pop it down on the side of this chest. What's going to happen is, and what's going to make this garden secret, is that the little gate in the side only opens when the moon comes out. So it's going to be a nighttime garden. Now what that's going to let me do, and this is what my friend suggested, um, is to utilise these colours, uh, you know, as if they're in the dark. So obviously the light changes quite considerably when it's dark, if there's some moonlight. And we're going to try and utilise the colours we've got and it's going to be a bit more sort of um, muted, shall we say. So I'd like to be able to depict, and my lines are a wee bit wonky here. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to have a little circle here, which I'm just going to rough it out freehand. I'm not going to worry about it too much. So I'm going to have a little circle there and then we can put the moon and we can have a few stars just to denote the fact that it is indeed at night time. Now I feel like this is too deep. I do want space to be able to get some texture for the, the stonework. As I said, I want this to be a cross between like a planter and a, and a a sort of treasure chest if you like. I do have a bit of a thing about, about treasure chests. And my little gateway is going to be in the side here. And then we're gonna to have to have some sort of a lock mechanism, which to me, if I draw that as a full circle first, to me would have the moon on it to show that that's what it needs to unlock. And then there would be a, a, a keyhole for good measure. And then what we can do is just take the top part, like we can just erase the top part of it. Sometimes I find that quite handy if you're going to do something like that where it's fragmented. If you draw the whole, you know, what it would look like as a whole and then just take away, it's easier than just trying to gauge it. So now we've got to think about the interior. So we're going to think about our garden. So really the colours in terms of the flowers. I'm really thinking uh, like th these ones, that's going to be so the, the sort of <clears throat> excuse me, this this sort of pinky red colour, this peachy colour and the lilac-y colour. And we're going to keep the, the blue and the turquoise colour because that's really going to be our leaves colour. I'm thinking as well, if the moon's here, it's probably going to cast, there will be shadow, but I think it's going to cast like this part here. So I'd really like a vine that's kind of like fought its way out of the box here. And maybe this same vine has made its way up into the lid. Okay, so I'm quite happy with the level of detail I've got now and I'm gonna take my fine liner. So I'm actually gonna do things back to front. I'm gonna outline first and then I'm gonna use my colored pencil, a bit like uh, as if I was coloring uh, an adult coloring page. And it's just so that I can get all these details in. Some of these are quite small, so it'll be interesting to see how we get on with this liner. Because as I said, in terms of fine liners, this is quite a fat fine liner. But we can see how we go. So we'll get zoomed in a little bit and I'll explain some of the things that I've added in as I go along. We don't want all these lines to be completely even because we want to kind of add that sense of, you know, like the natural stone. So I'm not going too hard in terms of trying to keep the lines perfectly straight. It's quite a busy little place in here, I tell you. So I've got this kind of like creeper vine that's kind of meandered its way up and it's disappearing off in there. But there's a branch that comes out and it kind of forks off here. And on it is a string of lanterns, which is something that I've become weirdly obsessed with this last little while. I think it's because it's something I would like to put in my own garden. <laughs> so I'm living vicariously through my art. <laughs> um, but I just want to get in my there's a big tree growing here in the middle. And uh, I imagine that when the lid goes down, the, the top of it kind of gets bent over and every time you open the box, it just springs back up again. <laughs> a bit like a sort of, um, like a jack in the box. Now I've got, weirdly, I've got a palm tree in here. I don't know where this has come from. <laughs> 
we've got a palm tree, so we'll add that in. And then that disappears down into the depths below. Now, obviously, the entrance into this is here, but I wanted to be able to see quite a lot. So just in front of this big tree, there is like a balcony. So I just want to pop that in. It's kind of like my reference point for everything else. Now, again, this, this tree situation is probably uh, growing, you know, down there on the lower level. So we'll tuck that in a little bit. Okay, I've decided I'm going to adjust the size of my, my moon a little bit and I'm going to change the direction of it as well. I'm going to make it a lot bigger. Now, I think I want this circle to be actually circular, so I might try and find something to draw around. That's too small. Um, I've got my tea mug here. <laughs> well, I can always see what that looks like. Yeah! <laughs> see? Perfect use. Okay, so before we get into the coloured pencil, I am literally going to fill this in with this pen. Um, so that might take me some time, so bear with me. Okay, so that was a little bit of epicness, but we got there. But the next thing I'm thinking about is... Um, shading and this is not going to be straightforward as always I like to make things easy on myself <laughs> so I think there's going to be a shadow line there I'm just thinking about this top plane make it a little bit darker in here but we can we can help with the pencil with that you know so I'm just going to start here now obviously we're going to layer up different shades and things I've just been dutifully informed that my uh, my husband is going to start moving cows just shortly, so there might be a bit of mooing. As always, I will do my best to edit it out. So let's give this a sharp, and we've got lots of tiny little areas to work in. Now, the cores are quite soft, so I'm going to use my Tagawa Multi Sharpener, and I'm going to try it on a number two, which is what I would use for Prisma colours. And that is a beautiful point. That really is. That's lovely. It's perfect. And it seems to be quite sturdy, which I'm excited about as well. So when we're thinking about the planes of this box, so really I'm talking about these two sides. This side is going to be darkest because it's furthest away from the light source. Now I'm also going to employ some of this blue as well. So if I pop a little bit of that down, and I'm having to resist the urge quite heavily to press because these are really soft pencils, all I'm going to do is essentially flood the tooth of the paper with the pigment. And what that means is you can't then go back and layer up anymore. Now, the nice thing is because we've got the fine liner as well, I can go back in and add some hatching there to darken it down. Again, with the thickness of the fine liner, it's not going to be very refined. Normally, I would use a really weeny weeny skinny fine liner for that. And in terms of our greenery, I do want to fill this all in in black in here, you know, in this doorway, in this entranceway. So I can start working on this part up here as well now. So same thing. That's me having to sharpen my grey pencil now. And then the stones at this end are probably going to have a little bit of a highlight on them. How exciting. <laughs> these, um, these little fronds and everything in here are going to be pretty dark. So I'm going to put down some of this darker blue and then I'm going to take my turquoise. Again, I need to sharpen this. I need to sharpen. Now it's this, it's this mid-tone struggle. I've got nothing darker. The grey is too pale. Uh, you know, to even put in a little bit of um, shading or anything, I'm going to have to use the blue, which is it's slightly frustrating, to be honest. And I've talked about this in a couple of unboxings with some things and it seems to be the worst with coloured pencils but we really we're just we do we just got a sea of mid-tones and it makes it very very difficult to get depth especially when your fine liner's this width as well because uh, it's just going to take over something on a you know on an a5 drawing like this but we've got to go with what we've got so that's what we're doing again sharpening the grey so you can see there, there's a lot of sharpening going on and see this is the downside of having really soft pencils um, if you're doing a big piece, uh, it, it actually cuts into quite a lot of your actual arting time. You spend a lot of time stopping to, to sharpen up your pencils. And that's bringing up a lovely texture, see, just because of the paper. So that, that's it. That's pretty good. I'm pretty happy with that, actually. I'm just going to use a little bit of this blue in where I was going to put the shadows in and just see if we can't make that look a bit better. Yeah, kind of. And the same round here, maybe these little uh, kind of pebbly stones, maybe they poke out from the, you know, the front of the box a little bit. I don't, I don't know, right? I'm just making this up. Come on, guys. 
The thing is, if we lay down too much of this, it does become very bright and it sticks out like a sore thumb, as we'd say here in Scotland. If you've ever bashed your thumb with a hammer, you know what I'm talking about. <laughs> See, that's given us a bit of contrast, but yeah, yeah, yeah. okay. Like, I was thinking, oh, this is so dangerous, but if I just wanted to add that in there, oh, I wish I had a finer, fine liner. There we go. Okay, that's given us a bit of variation. So with the lining of the box, let's talk about that. That's going to be really dark up in there. And as I say, as it comes down here, it's going to be lighter. But because there's a curvature on the box, we want that to be shown, so... If we just use the pencil here as best we can, it's not going to be the end of the world. But also this side as well is going to be much darker because the edge of this edge of the box is going to be blocking the light from this section. So even if we, um, you know, if we do a bit of that and then make it much darker down in this corner. Oh. And on this inside lip here, I'm trying to avoid my, my sort of fluffy pampas grass type stuff that's going on. There's another not interesting fact, I'm allergic to pampas grass. I have some strange allergies, but um, I did suffer with hay fever quite a lot as a as a teenager, and pampas grass was one of the things that just sent me stratospheric, and it's kind of stuck, even though I don't suffer with hay fever now. I have other allergies instead. I had a really nice conversation with someone. If this person is watching, please show yourself. <laughs> Leave me a comment um, about having a nut allergy and how allergies develop as you get older. Um, and I had this conversation with my doctor that your allergies can change and develop as you, you know, as you age. And that's pretty much what's happened to me. I'm going to add in a little bit more here. I just feel like that's... Um, I can't really do anything with this bottom part until I've done my pampas grass. So that'll have to wait. But we can come back down here. So I was thinking on this lock, we can use our, our sort of peachy colour. So we've got the lilac here and this is probably the only place where the lilac's going to come into its own. I've got these tulipy type things. Oh, they're nice. I might even have this one down here just as a, a something something. And then we can have the stem. So we can have the colours really bright here. Now if we cross over the lilac and the turquoise, it was going to give us some sort of purple, but is it going to really do anything? And the answer to that is no, not really. And this is going to be super dark in here. So I'm going to try and fill this in and really press down, like just with one layer of pencil here, because I really, really want this to be, to stand out against what else is going on, because it just helps to bring out the dimensions. Okay, our little lanterns, uh, I'm going to use the, the orange in inverted commas, but I'm just going to like, oh, see with a really light hand, as if you were like trying to draw a circle, like sketch out a circle, and that'll give them um, a little bit of a glow. I don't know why, but I was really, really looking forward to this part. Is that strange? And maybe have this one the same colour as well. Okay, so darker on this side. Again, kind of limited here in terms of um, how much actual room we've got to work with and getting our, our pencil in there, but we can we can do things with it, that's fine. Now for the, the tree trunks, I was thinking that maybe a mixture of the purple and the lilac, uh, the purple and the lilac, <laughs> This uh, orange and the lilac might do something, you know, again, this is just for variation. It's not to try and mix the right colour because I don't think the right colour exists, to be perfectly honest. Again, so the same thing here, like this, this is going to be a really dark plane because this is the side of this, this little balcony area. But it's like, oh, well, how, how much do you want to agonise over that, really? Um, the answer is not very much, not very much. So I think this tree is probably the same type of tree, <laughs> tree as that one. So let's get out our, our raspberry. So this is going to be much darker on this side. And then we can plonk some blue down on top of that. And I've got my palm tree to deal with. <laughs> a palm tree. Who puts a palm tree in a secret garden in a box? For goodness sake, what a ridiculous concept. <laughs> All right, the boys are just about to come here and pass with the cows. But I think I'm finished. Um, this is how much sharpening I've done with the grey pencil. If I just compare it to one that I've barely sharpened, which would be the light orange. Uh, that is one A5 drawing. So you can see how much pencil I've used in, in that one drawing. It's quite significant and it's actually a tiny piece of artwork, although that's an A5 sheet of paper. I've got pretty small hands and the amount of pencil I've used is smaller than the size of the palm of my hand. So I will let you be the judge on that. In terms of highlights, um... 
I don't think I'm accurate enough to use this on this drone and I'm a little bit dubious about the, the drying times. But apart from that, uh, the, yeah, it's actually turned out a lot better than I thought and I have to thank my friend for uh, putting the idea in my head about having a moonlight garden. I'd love to hear your thoughts on this drone. I'm just going to sign it. I think I, I, think I better sign it. Mm, do I want to sign it? No, I'll sign it around the moon. I'll do that. Um, yeah, so I'd love to hear your thoughts on the artwork here but also your thoughts on the box. My final thoughts on these pencils are that they, they are really really nice pencils. They're obviously very high quality and I'm impressed that they keep a point well despite being soft pencils. That aside, I, I don't think it's enough for me to change over from the pencils that I already use. What lets them down for me is the fact that the colour is on the label which is towards the end that you're going to sharpen so you're going to lose that really quickly. It would be nice for that to have been on the barrel and the dipped ends thing, although the dipped ends match the colour of the core very very well, it's much much easier especially if you're working with a lot of pencils if the whole barrel's that colour because it just speeds up the process when you're switching pencils. I still think these are really good pencils Pencils. I will put these in the stash shop for someone to have a shot of, uh, just as I've had a shot of them. So you can keep your eyes peeled. I update the stash shop on Sundays. They won't be in today's stash shop update. It will be next week. I do think they're nice pencils. In terms of the price of them, I think they're a bit on the pricey side, but I dare say with a little bit of shopping around, you could get them a little bit cheaper as well, which again would make them more appealing if it's like a second set of pencils, but you still want something good quality. I really want to chop that off. <laughs> like I'm going to cut this down. I'm going to cut this down. The Derwent uh, line maker held up really well as well. I'm impressed with that. It did struggle a little bit with some of this, but due to the rich lay down of these pencils, you can't really expect anything more from that. Um, so pretty good fine liner. And uh, as I said, with the, the with the liquid white coloured pencil, I think it has its place. It could do with being refined a little bit. If they'd given some information on drying times as well, that would have been really helpful. Working on an artwork this size with this brush which, well, like, yeah, it was never going to be of any benefit to me, so I was better just skipping that. But it was really nice to try this out, and I think with a proper brush and uh, a test out maybe on different brands of pencil, we'd probably find, like, an optimum combination. I want to thank you very much for watching. I'd love to hear what you did with your pencils for this uh, scroller challenge, because it really, really wasn't an easy one, given the colours that we had. So tell me a little bit about that in the comments, too. That would be great. As I said, you can check out the stash shop today. There'll be new items up in there for you to peruse. We've got new art supplies, used art supplies, and some cave artwork as well, if you fancy treating yourself. So that's it for today. I will see you back in the cave on Thursday for another video so please stay safe and take care of each other and I will see you again really soon. Bye for now everyone.